Microphone. So I'll start over. I said I try. I don't. I really, I feel like I don't. And this probably just comes from being a mother and never feeling like you can do enough for your children. Having a balance with a two-year-old, a five-year-old, and a nine-year-old is very difficult. My business is very demanding, and so are my children. So it really, it comes at a priority basis. At the moment, if my kids aren't getting hurt in school, then I can be at work. But if they're getting hurt at school, then I have to leave work and tend to my children. It's something that women struggle with, whether it's a reality or not. But I think it's important that as women, we just try. At the end of the day, your kids know that mom tried, that mom was there when they needed mom. And I just go through day by day, especially because my kids are so young, but I don't know that I really truly do balance life. It's on a priority basis. I've got kids too, they're six and 10. So, okay, here's the honest answer. We eat out every single night. There was that turning point. There was some night I thought I could be superwoman and make this great dinner. And we were eating at 8.30. Everyone was mad at me and hungry. I'm like, oh. And we use a lot of paper plates. This is the truth, people. Just who does dishes? Paper plates and we eat out. Let's just be practical. But, you know, I'm also an older mom. I was pregnant at 40. So I feel like I'm tired, but I really appreciate my kids. So what I try to do when I have that time with them, even if it's just an hour before bedtime, I try to really look them in the eye, right? Like really connect, tell them I see you, you know what I mean? Instead of me just being distracted by my cell phone or the 20 million things that could distract me, I try to really connect. And I'll tell you, the other secret I have is, besides an amazing husband, his parents are fantastic. My husband is Korean and there's a real strong like Asian, like we're a big family. It's not just the four of us. It includes his parents and there's some bad things and good things about that and some boundary issues. That's Mary Winter's talk. But mom, grandma and grandpa pick up the kids. They drop them off at school and they pick them up at the end of the day. And that's how I can take that panicked client call at 545 because I'm not worried I'm going to get charged by daycare every minute I'm late. So thank you to my supportive family. It's just... It's everything. And I really, what you said too, like you gotta go day by day and just, for me, it's flexibility. I own my own firm. So, hey, if this Friday isn't overbooked, I'll just take off and maybe pick the kids up early. I'll just take the time where I can find it and just enjoy it when you find it. I think it is being in moment and life will tell you if it feels uncomfortable and it's not working and what you need to do to change things. Um, my kids are grown and they're getting married, but I had three in, in 35 months, my Irish triplets, I call them. And, um, you know, you just, you just try to be in the moment, be with them when you can. You're going to have times where you absolutely feel like you're the crummiest mom in the world. You're not serving your clients needs. Um, and you have to stand back from that. You have to be kind to yourself and you have to say, I'm trying the best I can. You can't do any more than try the best you can. I love this question so much. I'm actually going to pass the mic over this way. I don't think there's any wrong or right answer. This Hi. I actually have six children with my husband. Whoa. So four of, them are, four of them are adopted, two are biological children. And like Lurianne, I started off late. So I have my six kids are eight years, you know, there's an eight year span. Most of them are older, but I still have two in high school. And I think the message that my age group sold a lot of the women was that you can just do everything. And my message is you can't. Um, sometimes you just have to prioritize and stop and decide what's more important. And maybe, you know, if that's the children, great. If that's your career, okay. But you may not be perfect in both areas. and. You have to choose where you want to spend your time. So it's okay career-wise to take a little break too. Uh, thanks. Hey everyone. Um, so I have one daughter, she's right there, uh, she's 10. And I've been a single mother and we've had some challenges, um, but you know, I moved across country with my daughter 
and she was three and we didn't have any support. So I was like, everyone's like, how the hell are you gonna survive? But we made it work. And I think for me, like I faced people looking at me funny, like, well, how can you be uh, in a job and work at night? Cause I was in finance and you have to meet clients at night and on the weekends. But you know, I live by the rule that there are no rules and I do what's right for me and I do what's right for my family. And like um, she said over there, sometimes you just readjust by what feels right. So, yeah. And I also appreciate everyone for being so vulnerable and real in this panel. Um, I too am a single mom, three kids. I have one that's uh, just turned five, one 12, and one uh, 13 turning 14. So I have like a kindergarten, junior high, and high school this year, all spectrums, and it's been crazy. We live a very unconventional lifestyle. So when you ask me about work-life balance, I was hoping somebody down there would be able to tell me. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, but I just, you know, time management is key for me. Um, I try to dump my brain the night before to say what I need to get done the next day. And I always make sure that I get my time. It's important that my kids get their individual time. Otherwise I get attitudes. So they have to have their <laughs> individual time. Then they have to have their collective time together. We play a game and then I have to have my joy time. So there's nights where my kids are up until 11 o'clock, you know, on a school night. I got one that's in a public school, one is two that's being homeschooled, and it's just, it's crazy for us, you know, but we make it work. It's my life, it's my kid's life, and I think it's important if you're gonna have a, a balance that you know what's right for you, like they've said, you know, you know what's right for you, but always make sure that you have your own time. If I have to exercise at 11 o'clock at night, because that's what keeps me sane, then I make it happen, I make it work out. But it's my life and I balance the way I know it's right for me to balance it. It's not gonna look the same for everybody. I am, I guess, the only one on the panel without kids yet. <laughs> I'm actually the age that both my mother and my grandmother got pregnant. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, it's coming. <laughs> so, um, um, as you know by my introduction, I wrote this book about being an adrenaline addict. And being a speaker traveling on the road had only made that even worse. So I had to really learn from the book and from the coaching and from the strategies how to keep my life in balance because some days I wouldn't even have 24 hours. There would be 26 hours when I was traveling and constantly be on the go. And so one of the principles that I talk about in the book that has helped me tremendously is about the power of now and being in the present. As an adrenaline addict and as a busy woman on the go, in my mind, my ego, that's not my amigo, my enemigo, will say, <laughs> what's next? What are we doing next? And always wanna go, go, go. And that's how I burned out and ended up in the hospital. And so now instead of saying, what's next? I say, what's now? What's right here and right now that I'm doing? And I focus all of my energy and attention on that and I let go of the rest. So the other thing that I do on a regular basis, and I have a calendar, a passion planner calendar, anybody have those, that supports this, is I have a to-do list and then I have a let go list. So I can't control anything or anyone being an entrepreneur. Everyone's my client, everyone's my boss. So what I have to do is let go of what I can control, which is my idea of perfectionism, my idea that I can say yes to everything. So part of my work-life balance is empowering myself to say no with a smile and a period and end of story, so. These are really great answers and it's actually something I can learn from. Um, don't have any children and the oldest is six so with a stay at home mom. So I always wondered how she did it. Why was she always so crazy? And I honor any woman with a full time job and children. <laughs> On to our next question. I am successful because I am woman, not in spite of that. That means, and I'll let you fill in the blank. I'll actually start down here. This was the hard question for me. I could think of all the negatives about it, so I'm going to sound rather negative. My first thought was, I, when I graduated from college, I had a math degree many years ago before computer science degrees existed, and I got hired because I was considered a minority, so that was a good thing. <laughs> but I think what we do have to offer is we do do business differently, uh, we work differently, and perhaps because we are perceived maybe sometimes 
as being less threatening, we can get more information out of people and we can put them at ease a little bit more. And I know in my practice that certainly is the case. I work with my partners, uh, a guy, he's my husband. And sometimes it's easier when I come in, they just, you know, people just assume that somehow I'm gonna be the softer touch. Does that mean that we're not tough inside? Of course not, it's all about presentation skills. So I would highly encourage anybody to use that. Thank you. Okay, so this was my favorite question because I was um, very much in my masculine. And when I went into finance, and I'm from Philadelphia, so you know, it's a little bit more powerful and abrasive, <laughs> but anyway. But anyway, I was in my masculine and I found out when I started doing my spiritual work is that there's like our divine feminine and then there's our masculinity. And I thought, well, wow, I am so far away from my femininity. And our power as women lies in that. So like we are intuitive goddesses, no matter what your age, no matter what you look like, no matter your background, no matter what happened to you, we have an intuitive faculty that is a part of us just as much as our body, just as much as our intellect. The more that we tap into that, the more that we're in our power. So that's why we can be successful and that's why we're truly born rich. So once we can realize that, then you know we can open up to all of it. I love what she just said because it kind of goes into what, what I want to say about this. This was also my favorite question right here. Um, there's a Chinese proverb that says women hold a path to sky. And we learn to do that from a very young age because we have to. And one of the things that makes me successful as a, as a female is we naturally, first of all, we push. And I do mean push in labor with kids <laughs> because our body, we're, we're naturally uh, designed and created to do that and we can, we have a high pain tolerance and even though you know some of us have to take Demerol and other things to make that push yeah, okay. <laughs> when it comes out yeah and that's okay but in in business and when it comes to being successful we have challenges that come at us that men don't have to go through you know and they do too that women don't have to go through but we have so many challenges and we naturally can take that pain and birth it birth our visions, birth our dreams. And the second thing is we naturally nurture. You know, I'm successful as a female because I naturally nurture. And what I do, my humanitarian work, when I'm speaking, we're nurturing people all the time. So that's one thing. And the other thing is we naturally create. We naturally create. And when there are no doors, you guys, we, we create those doors and we'll knock down walls to create our own opportunity. I mean, what would it be like if we just sat there and waited for women's right to vote to just fall on our lap? No, we kick down doors and we make that wall, you know, we make our own doors and make it happen. And the last thing is, um, I'm into martial arts and my sensei has always said, we're like water. You know, you have to be like water. You have to flow through those crevices, through rocks. Um, the wind causes even the oceans and the rivers to, to shift, right? So that's important for us as a woman, as a female, we're ever changing as our bodies are changing. I think it's like every seven years. So we have to always continue to be adaptable and flexible. And these are things that we naturally do. So for me as a female, that's what creates my success is like she said, just taking that natural uh, feminine, how do you say that? Femininity? Femin yeah, femininity. Femininity. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and using that, using that towards our success. Women power activate. I love this. I love this panel. I love this subject. Uh, I absolutely love being a woman. I absolutely know that the only limitations we have is our mindset. And I had the most amazing mentors in my grandmother and my mother. Born in New York, my grandmother said, you can do anything that you set your mind to do. And at the time that she was um, growing up, people weren't going for master's degrees. She got her master's degree from Columbia University, became a nurse educator. And she said, she was so funny. She's like, when you get married, always keep your mad money under the bed. Keep your $500 mad money because you are an empowered woman and you can do, anybody really? You can do whatever you want to do. And my mother um, was about a dancer and a ballerina. And that was her vision. That was her dream. And they said she wasn't skinny enough to be able to be a dancer. And she went on to go to Juilliard, 
um, got her degree in speech pathology, and at 70 years old, she'll get mad if I said her age. I didn't say, at a great age, she's performing in a dance troupe, okay? She, like right now, if you go to Antelope Valley, you'll see my mom on stage, choreography, <laughs> performing, and so I really believe that it's mindset. And one of the things that both my grandmother and mother taught me is this amazing ability that we have as women to multitask. They never ever said, I don't have time. And my mother raised two boys with disabilities. How she did it, and I know it's the patience that she had, that's one of the things that women have, is just this immense amount of patience, pain tolerance to have a baby. Now one of my baby brothers is 24 and is a single father of, 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 of my God baby. And I just know that he's able to do that because of the nurturing of my mother. So I, I love my mom, love you mom. <laughs> I'm gonna make my way down here to you ladies. And I know it's a very difficult question, but I am successful because I am a woman, not in spite of that, that me. You know, I think my dad was a, an original feminist, actually, and he's the one who told me, you can do anything you want, and you can be you can be the business owner. You don't have to be the person working for the business owner. You can be the doctor. You don't have to be the nurse. You can be the administrator. You don't have to be the secretary. Women had barriers, I think. We had like five basic categories we could fit into our careers, teachers, saleswomen, um, nurses, so on. And I, I think my dad was the originator of that. He had three daughters. And so of course he wanted us to excel. I went to an all girls high school, very different than going to a co-ed school. And somebody asked me the other day, well, what was that like? I loved it, I don't know, it was great. It, and, it, and it taught me that we didn't have any barriers. Women had to do everything, move the furniture around and lead the, the programs and be, you know, we weren't competing against men but we, we were able to see that we could be in these positions of influence. I love men. I think we shouldn't necessarily feel like we have to compete with men. Men work with us. We are different and we are the same. Um, I, I, I love the feminine side of being a woman. I love the masculinity that a man brings. I love the, the differences that we hold, but the, um, the support that we can give one another. I have two sons. I have one daughter, but I have two sons, and I want to see them excel and have good, healthy, nurturing relationships with the women that are in their lives and maybe the daughters that they'll wind up having too. So I think it's important to support um, both both sides of the fence and and to know that that we we do come with our own differences and our powers and our strengths. And I think women are excellent at multitasking. Um, and I think that actually the brain research will show that too, that men are, are very good at, at singular focus and driving certain things, and women can be very good at um, multitasking. And we hear about our nurturing sides and um, all the children that we take care of and so forth. So I, I think that we, um, I think we embrace who we are because we are who we are. I started practicing in 94, and it was still a man's world in law, and I can't tell you how many times the older, sorry, white male would be like, get me the coffee. And I'm like, I'm not the paralegal, I'm the lawyer. <laughs> and we've come so far from that, you know, I'm 22 years out now, and I also learned, you know, we all have our identity struggles, and I went through that too, especially being a 20 year old in West LA and Los Angeles and having fun. And at some point I just figured out who I was and got that power voice. And as soon as I started talking, no one thought I was a secretary anymore, right? You just speak from that place of empowerment and that really made all the difference. So I, I wanted to say that first about, you can be completely feminine and be powerful and gain respect. It's not less because you're feminine, it's more. And you can kind of scare them in a little. Yes. Men in the room, right? Yes. <laughs> and then I thought about, okay, well, what's uniquely feminine that really adds to what I do? And for anything I could think of, I thought, well, I know men that are like that too. So, you know, you know we can blur the gender lines, whatever. But, you know, I do family fights over money. That's probate litigation. And I think the one thing that I can bring, and some men have too, but I can emotionally connect to my clients. 
So this family fight over money is not really about money. It's about deep-seated jealousies and sibling rivalries and who is the favorite and who knows whatever weirdness and dysfunction. Every family is unique and has their dark secrets that are in the closet. And it's so important for you to figure out what those are because not every case needs to be tried. Most of these need to settle. No one needs to have their laundry out in court for the public to see. So it's my job, and I think I'm able to do that because I'm a woman, figure out what's really driving the fight because getting people, it's almost like you're a therapist, get that out, get over that. Leanne, right, Mary, we deal with this. They gotta get that out, and then it's my job to get them from this emotional, dysfunctional, subjective, like state of mind, to get them to make a business decision about their case. And I'm sure it's the same in finance, right? Women have a lot of issues about finance and money, and you gotta get them beyond that, get them into their business mind, but you can't do that until you connect to them emotionally, and they feel like they've been heard. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing like, I think, being a woman that uniquely makes you suited for that. So. When I first read that question, I didn't identify with it because my initial thought was, I feel so lucky and so blessed to grow up in a time where I didn't have to fight the fights that the women pioneer before me had to fight in the workplace. I don't understand that question. How do I even compare? And then I, I, I realized I, that I could make this fun. So I thought, you know what? It, if you're born a woman in the US, anywhere in the whole world, if you're born a woman by default, you are an emotional ninja. And your whole <laughs> life is all about figuring out how to deal with these emotions. At least over half my life, every month, my emotions have shifted from, from one spectrum to the other. That Those are the things that dealing with issues and being emotional and growing up a girl in a world where you hear it's a man's world, although I don't really connect with that because I feel like I really have had such an amazing, um, I'm growing up in an amazing time, and I say I'm growing up because I still feel like I'm a kid. I'm not grown up, guys, okay? I'm having a lot of fun with what I do. And when I look at my mom, and she's an immigrant woman, she, divorced after 20 years, I was nine years old. She still had four children in the household that she had to raise by herself. My dad disappeared. And I saw my mom, I saw, I saw how she beha behaved in the face of adversity. I don't know how she did it. She had three jobs. I know what it feels like for me when I look at my kids and I spend more time with my kids than my mom spent with me. I can just imagine her emotions and feeling like she has to provide so she can't be for her kids. I felt like I was always a team player. I, I always had to do what my mom couldn't do, which was cook, clean, make sure that I went, I walked, I walked myself to school, walked myself back to from school. And we're dealt all these cards and girls because we've we're dealing with our emotions from the moment that we're born. We're just very good at heading things on, whatever it is. And so our lives are a big explosion of what do you got? I feel like the li my life is always asking me, what do you got? Whenever a new situation happens and I wanna give up, and I'll tell you there's a lot of moments like that. And then I think about, I had three natural labors, no epidural, completely natural, and let me tell you, after each labor, I felt that is the hardest thing I have ever gone through. And when, whenever I face a situation in my life, I compare that to labor. Does not compare at all whatsoever. I can do anything I, I put my mind to. I mean, really nothing compares to labor. Girl, ladies, you're amazing for being able to carry those babies, have birth, and then do what you do for the rest of your lives. We, we are an incredible, creature. Gosh, I love this. Emotional ninja. That's, that's my term. I'm no longer acting crazy or bipolar. I'm just an emotional ninja. Yeah. Thank you for that. 
I'm gonna look, we're gonna take a few minutes to break, but I'm gonna allow Teresa. She's gonna say thank you very much. Thank you. Are these some awesome, awesome speakers up here? What a panel. I, I am, am truly inspired by every single one of you. Thank you again for being here. Um, just a couple of, of takeaways, and I know you all have your own, but one of the things that grabbed me, she already stole the emotional ninja, wherever that came from. Patent it, bottle it, sell it, because it's good stuff. Um, and then the other last comment was,